So today on the call here we have Alistair McGregor from TripAdvisor. So welcome Alistair, great to have you on the call today. Thank you very much Tony, it's nice to be speaking to you again. Good. Well today our focus is really on a business, a business such as bed and breakfast and self-catering, more of the smaller business. Um, and I just I suppose we start off by saying why is it important for businesses such as uh, bed and breakfast and self-catering? So TripAdvisor is now the largest travel website in the world. I think since we last spoke to you, we've now gone up to 56, unique, uh, 56 million unique visitors a month. Um, we've got 50 new reviews going up every minute, 75 million in the database. People are enjoying using the site. And it's important for small business owners to be managing their reputations online now. Okay, perfect. Uh, so it is getting, it's growing all the time, I suppose, from a TripAdvisor point of view. It's getting more and more important for businesses. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're growing um, everywhere. We're uh, more popular in Europe than we are now in North America. Uh, and we still have a big room for growth in Latin America, in Asia, and Africa as well. So we think our growth levels will remain exponential um, for the next three or four years, certainly. We're also becoming very popular on mobile as well, so 10% of all of that traffic is coming through on smartphones. Okay, brilliant. So if I'm at a bed and breakfast, for example, or self-catering, how do I manage my listing within TripAdvisor? Yeah, so the most important thing to do to either engage with the site or with us as an organization is to register at the Management Center. The Management Center can be found at www tripadvisor.ie forward slash owners you need to find your business there and then register as the owner or the manager against it. Okay, so once you're registered as an owner or manager, if you have problems with anything with the listing, you would use the management center would be the best form of communication with TripAdvisor. Absolutely. So there's a whole uh, set of free tools that BNB and Self Catering users can use to do two things really. One is to engage with us as an organization, so dispute reviews that you're unhappy with, ask our customer service team for, for help. The other thing that you can do in there is things like manage the content on the actual listing. So examples of that might be uploading photos that you have of your property or writing a property description. Okay, so for example, in my bed and breakfast, somebody comes in and puts up a review that I'm unhappy with. I could complain if I was very unhappy with it, if there was good reasons to? Yeah, so uh, the, the site was set up for travellers to share their opinions, so regrettably if their opinion is just one that you don't agree with, um, we can't necessarily remove that. What we would encourage you to do is to write a management response, which would be an opportunity for you to kind of really convey your version of events maybe acknowledge if something went wrong and a procedure that you might have to rectify. On the other hand, if you have a problem with a review, in other words, you are suspicious about it, there certainly is a mechanism for our content integrity team to investigate that review and potentially remove it if it breaches our guidelines. The guidelines are very clearly published within the management centre. Okay, so if, for example, it was a fake review, uh, my best approach would be using the management centre to communicate. That would be the best way to dispute it and hopefully would have someone investigating it very quickly. Um, if you can give us the most uh, content as possible or reasons why you have a problem with a review, it will be a lot easier for us to uh, expedite the process. Okay, perfect. And in terms of the ranking with TripAdvisor, if I wanted to move up or down the ranking, so, so somebody searches for a self-catering accommodation. How, what sort of things would affect my my ranking? So, there's, that's a question that we get asked quite a lot, and mm -hmm. clearly, the algorithm or the formula that influences that popularity index is a pretty closely guarded secret. But what I can tell you is as follows: Firstly, there are offline and online factors. Offline factors, as a small business owner, um, you can have no control over. So, things like your room size are taken into account. We're trying to give a level playing field for small hotels against the large chain hotels, for example. Uh, the online factors are things that you can have influence over, 
And the three things that we give the most weighting are as follows. Firstly, the recentness of a review. So a review that comes in today or yesterday is given more weighting than something that's a week old or a couple of months old. The next thing that we look at is the average score. So a whole lot of one out of fives probably do you less favor than an average score of five out of five. And then the last thing that we're looking at is the volume of reviews, granted that we consider the actual size of the business as well. So if you add all of that up, what we encourage you to try and do is to get lots of regular positive reviews. And we have a few ideas as to how you might do that. Okay, well, actually, you might as well touch on them while we're here. What are your ideas for uh, getting more reviews? Well, firstly, on the management centre, there is a mechanism to do things like download flyers or reminder cards that you might hand out to a guest on departure. And secondly, there's a whole lot of online tools that you can embed on your website. We call them widgets, and that you might use those to, A, display your reviews in the first place, but secondly, encourage guests to leave more reviews. The other thing that you might consider doing, if you're in the habit of sending courtesy emails out to your guests post-stay, is embedding a little bit of code or a link, which will enable them to write a review very easily. Okay, great. I think last time we met, Alistair, you had an example of a, was it a hotel giving out something at reception, which helped get reviews. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, absolutely. So within that management center, you can print out a flyer or order business cards. Um, the other thing that we also encourage properties to do is just to ask for reviews. If someone's had a good stay, would you mind writing a review once you get home? What we don't endorse is incentivizing them to do it. Okay. In other words, we'll discount your stay or offer you a free meal if you write something positive about us. That's what we would call a, a no-no. Okay, perfect. Uh, um, you would obviously recommend that people would respond to, business owners would respond to positive reviews, but also negative reviews. Yeah, I think my personal opinion is that every negative review should be acknowledged and responded to. As far as positive reviews go, we do see that a significant amount of people uh, do like to see responses to positive review. My advice would be to, when you are responding to those positive reviews, try and think of something new to add to the conversation. So does it provide you with an opportunity to upsell or cross-sell other products? Can you mention that you do a takeaway lunch? Can you mention that you're happy to run people in the car down to the train station? So forth and so on. Okay, so TripAdvisor sounds great. You know, as a small business, I can register there. I can have the listings up and running. Uh, but is it, you know, is it going to cost me any money in terms of what charges are, are there? Do I have to pay TripAdvisor any money for any of this? No, so everybody will be on TripAdvisor free of charge, uh, regrettably, whether they like it or not. It is a platform for travellers to share their experiences ultimately. But everything that we've talked about thus far is free of charge. Um, but the key to it is to register with that management centre. We do have uh, an enhanced listing subscription called Business Listings, and that's an annual cost based on the size of the property. And there's lots about that on the website as well. Okay, great. Great. So it's not something I necessarily have to do, but is a, it's an option for additional exposure within TripAdvisor. My suggestion would be something to consider once you are very comfortable in the management centre and it's working for you. If you'd like to consider other things that you might be able to do to channel that traffic into even more bookings. But the key thing really is to engage with all of those free tools in the first place. Okay, great. And are there other to tools within TripAdvisor besides the management centre and reviews? For example, I know there's forums. Is there any other areas of TripAdvisor you'd recommend for small businesses to, to uh, take a look at? Yeah, absolutely. So two things really. Within the management centre, there is a possibility to subscribe to our newsletters. So we send those out periodically to business owners to give them top tips and how-to guides. All of that marketing collateral, if you like, is available on our blog as well. So hopefully there'll be a screenshot of the URL for the blog, but it's yeah. very much a point of reference uh, to see what's going on, what's in the pipeline, nice how-to guides, because people often forget um, what we've talked about during the course of a presentation. And yes, there are forums for travellers to share. Lots of B&B owners will do things like monitor what guests are saying in County Clare, and then maybe 
think if they can tailor their product to appeal to those guests even more. Okay. If now in terms of a, a hotel competing against a bed and breakfast, is there, would hotels get preference if I search for accommodation in an area or will it be on an equal footing? should be on an equal footing. We do categorise hotels as hotels and B&Bs and inns in a slightly separate category. Again, if you have a problem with the categorisation that you're in, then please do let us know through the management centre. We can look at it. We'll normally refer to the tourist board as a point of reference. But as far as size of property goes, the, the, the site is very much designed to try and give a level playing field to all properties, uh, judged not by us, not judged by the tourist board, but judged by the actual travellers themselves. Okay. Now, just one question, Alistair, that came up uh, when we, you were at an event with us recently was, for example, when a property is maybe outside the city centre and somebody does a search, you'd like to be included in the search even though you're not exactly in the city centre. Is there any way around this? I suppose there's advantages and disadvantages for uh, including in this search or not including. Yeah, so we have to be very, very careful about placing properties in incorrect places. We do understand why uh, B&Bs and satellite villages want to be included in the search for the main town they're around. So what we've tried to do now is expand the radius from which guests can look at. So if you're in a small town which is satellite of a, of a big town, then please do go and have a look at the listing. You'll see that now there is an ability for the guests to look for results within 5, 10 and 20 kilometres outside the original destination to try and give a bigger spread there. The way that we uh, place businesses is by talking to local councils. Uh, we call it municipalities, local councils and tourist boards. So again, if you think that you're placed in uh, an incorrect location, let us know through the management centre and we'll see what we can do. Okay, great. Now, I understand TripAdvisor, it's not just TripAdvisor site. You have a range of sites. You seem to buy a lot of companies so, in the travel industry. So is there any other sites in the TripAdvisor family uh, that uh, bed and breakfast or self-catering would need to be aware of? Yeah, I think so. The, the, the actual TripAdvisor reviews themselves are displayed on many third-party sites, but especially with the self-caterers in mind, I would ask them to have a look at our holidaylettings.co.uk website. Uh, that's a company that was recently acquired by the TripAdvisor Media Group and is where we really push most self-catering or all self-catering companies that would like to engage with us. Okay, great. So you could register with, with holidaylettings.co.uk as well? Correct. Okay, perfect. Great. Well, that was brilliant. Is there any tips in terms of takeaway? If you were saying what are the top tips for small businesses such as B&Bs and self-catering, what, what would they be uh, that they could start immediately with? T top two tips, uh, or top three tips even, make sure that you engage with the management centre because you can have no, uh, you can't talk to us as an organisation or interact with the site without doing it. So that's step number one, but the most important. Uh, secondly, be aware of reviews that are coming on. There is a huge amount of volume of traffic on the site, so you do want to be responding to those reviews, especially on the occasion where you might get a negative one. And then thirdly, keep an eye on that blog, lots of hopefully top tips and how-to guides. Um, we want to see you doing well. Brilliant. Well, Alistair, thank you very much. That was brilliant information. I, see, I, I hope that all, everybody at the events will really enjoy the tips you got. and. We will provide the information related to the blog and all that, so that will be very useful. So thank you very much, Alistair, for taking the call today. It's my pleasure. Lovely speaking to you, and thank you very much.